All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed, they're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open, the other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let's take a look at problem 13A. A very typical topic in an intro chapter of managerial accounting is to discuss ethics. And I always find the examples are a little unrealistic, at least to my experience as a CPA. So I wrote up this one and it's, uh, it's an experience that most young CPAs will tell you has happened to them. So anyway, let's read through the scenario and uh, it's meant to spark a discussion in a classroom, but uh, I hope maybe you'll pause the video and think about what you would do if you were faced with this situation. Here we go. It's Saturday evening in tax season and after a brutal week of tax prep, you worked most of Saturday, much to your dismay. You and your friend Brady Sampson are sharing some beers at the pub. You're complaining to Brady that you've blown the budget on your last three files and that the next three on your desk don't seem to be going any better. You ask Brady how he always manages to get his work done on time and under budget. Simple, he says. I go over budget on some of my files too, but I just eat the time. You have absolutely no idea what he's talking about. So you ask him what eat the time means. I come in on Sunday and work a few hours off the clock to catch up on the files where I've fallen behind schedule. I don't charge the clients or the CPA firm. I eat the time and the bosses love me for it. The managing partner saw me in last Sunday and gave me a pat on the back. I'm probably going to get promoted next June. You contemplate what Brady has just said. You are both at the same junior level in the firm and it's obvious to you that he is on track for a promotion. Well, you are not. Should you start to eat time too? So that's the dilemma. And uh, I can say this is a fairly common story at the uh, junior level, maybe even at higher levels in accounting firms. But uh, there is a temptation there to meet your budget. You'll just work some time off the clock in files if you are somebody who's continually blowing budgets. That certainly the temptation exists. Now, here we are in an accounting class. And I can tell you just being a teacher of an accounting class, most students will very comfortably tell you, hey, you shouldn't eat time because, you know, it's, uh, it's very easy to say in an accounting class. But I want you to know that the pressures are real. Um, but let's, let's look at this from a different angle. Let's not talk about whether you would or would not, although you can certainly think about that. Let's think about the best reasons to eat time, as Brady is doing, and the best reasons to not eat the time. So uh, let's... Uh, so, uh, eat, time, don't eat time. So I'm answering part uh, A, list the three best three reasons for and best three reasons against eating time. So what are some good reasons to eat time? I think they're pretty obvious. One, um, uh, complete file, uh, complete files under budget, or more files under budget anyway. Two, uh, uh, you know, be a better employee, or better, like, not be better employee, that's a, that's a little bit loaded, but the bosses will like you better. As a, a function of completing files under budget, uh, you'll be more apt to get a promotion. So uh, maybe I'll say uh, better position to move up. Uh, reason number three, good reason to eat the time, and they're all kind of tied to each other. I, I think we can think of a myriad of reasons, but it's all about sort of getting ahead at the firm, being liked by our bosses, and, you know, competing ultimately with uh, our friend Brady here. But it's... Uh, 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 better evaluations, more money eventually, right? You're going to get more raises if you're somebody who's always coming in on time and under budget. 
Why not eat the time? Well, one, there's a personal cost. You just work Saturday, and now you're either going to work on evenings or on the Sunday. You know, you, you work a lot as a, a young CPA and, well, even as an old CPA at these CPA firms. You do they have an amazing work ethic. So absolutely, that's uh, it will come at some personal cost. Two, and this is one you might not twig on to being a, a student who, if you haven't worked at a firm, but often they base their budget for next year on how you did this year. So if they say a file should take five hours this year and you come in at four, they'll say, oh, wow, I guess I can do it in four. Okay, five was a reasonable budget, even if it really took you eight and you kind of lied to bring it back to four. So you mess up future budgets right and, and you mess up whoever gets that file next year you're kind of screwing them over and very often it's you who gets the file next year so you're screwing your future self uh, by doing this and three and uh, this is the one that sings to me more and it doesn't always sing to my students in the same way when we discuss this in class but three it's dishonest to eat time right And, and to me, this is the one that shines above the rest, but to you, it might be something else. So is eating time ethical? Why or why not? Uh, you know, I think there's good arguments why it is ethical, although you can bet I'm going to sit on the other side of this <laughs> argument. But here are the common arguments in favor that you might hear in class. Uh, people say it's a victimless crime in that, you know, Brady, who goes in and works all this extra time, He's only harming himself. It's good for the firm and it's good for the client and he's doing extra work off the clock. So what? That's him, right? It is sort of if an idea of ethics is do no harm, well, he's not harming himself because he sees it as an investment in his own future. So, you know, who's it harming? We could debate maybe it's harming you because he's killing it on the budgets. But, you know, in terms of harming the client or harming the firm, he's not, right? He's not stealing from anybody or doing anything awful like that. He's giving extra good service off the clock. Uh, so I think that's the best argument for. Uh, I, I am more convinced by the arguments against, and, and the biggest one being, it's dishonest behavior, you know, and, and it has these knock-on effects where if you get the file next year, you did it in four fake hours this year, they're going to expect you to do it in four fake hours next year. And I think uh, a big piece of being a CPA and, and making it in this business is, is integrity. And I do think that as soon as you start telling lies, even if you think they're white lies that are positive, you're on the wrong track. So that's my own opinion. Now, I will tell you, um, and so what should you do? Obviously, I think you should uh, uh, continue to report your time accurately. Now, uh, a difference between an A and an A-plus answer here is not only do they say, oh, you know, because of these reasons, I think we should, you know, not eat the time, or, or they might argue to eat the time, uh, uh, but what should you do about Brady? Do you have an obligation now to report Brady? that he's doing all this work off the clock. Is it foolish to report Brady? Students that tackle that side of the dilemma, that's more of an A plus level paper. If you can sort of go one step further and say, well, wait, now I, I don't think it's right that it, this is happening. Let's just say you're like me. Do I have an obligation to sort of blow the whistle on Brady? Do I have an obligation to address it with him directly? Do I have an obligation to go to the managers and say, hey, Brady's working off the clock here and I don't like it. And, you know, maybe that has implications for you. So students that will grapple with that, and by the way, there's not a right answer here, but students that grapple with that, I, I think are, are going the distance here and they, they're doing a better job. Uh, a final note, I coach case competition teams and I'll never forget one year we went in and the, the case was about um, doing business, uh, it was an accounting case, but the, the company had to do business in a developing country. And part of doing business in the developing country is Often to get the paperwork through, you had to pay bribes. And that was in the case, you know, it was laid out there in the case. Well, one of the teams said uh, on their income statement, they had a line, bribe expense, $10,000 or whatever the number was. And uh, they were like immediately got last place for that. Uh, in 
I think in real life this is true, but certainly in the classroom, if you are in a position where you have an ethical dilemma, I think you're always smart in the classroom to take the high road. Now this student that recommended to take a bribe, in the States they have this thing called the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. In Canada we have a very similar uh, bribery of foreign officials act or something like this. Almost everywhere around the world it's illegal. So if you're in a position where you're in a class and you recommend uh, that the, the decision maker, the, you know, the person in the case do something illegal or unethical, you can really get screwed over. Even if you think, oh, this is a logical idea. If I were here in real life, it's a bit gray. No, no, no. You should always walk on the right side of the line. Uh, and I think you should in life in general, but I'm telling you in the classroom, 100%, right? You should be uh, uh, you, the most angelic version of yourself. And speaking of being the most angelic version of yourselves, uh, uh, just as you get to the end of the video, where am I? Am I pointing in the right direction? Be a very angelic version of yourself and uh, smash one of those buttons for me. All right. Uh, I look forward to the rest of our course. You know, this is uh, a weird chapter. Chapter one, uh, more blah, 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 talking. Uh, in future chapters, we will crunch numbers. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.